Good afternoon, boys and girls. Welcome to today's lesson. I hope you guys are all enjoying the change in temperature. Nice and warm the last couple of days. Makes a very uh, pleasant change. Excellent, excellent. Well, at least from my side, I'm very, very happy about that. Okay. Um, guys, today's lesson, we're going to be discussing a little bit of mating ones. Then we're going to be um, reaching the topic of stalemate. I find that, um, especially at junior level, we do see far too many stalemates. And uh, it's a topic I, I feel like we need to discuss. So that's what our treading carefully is all about. We're going to get into some detail about what you want to be on the lookout for, how to avoid stalemate. Because remember, stalemate, mm, it's, uh, it's terrible news for us. Of course, it generally happens when you're on the verge of claiming the victory. You're about to checkmate them. Then we end up making a slip along the way. And then we end up stalemating the opponent. And that results in a draw. Guys, uh, just a friendly reminder to please keep those microphones muted and uh, to get involved in the lesson, to interact a little bit, please. Um, you can do so on the Lee Chess chat room by just placing um, your cursor here and typing something in. You can type a hello, that like I'm going to do right here. Uh, preferably not a hello, just when I want you guys to, um, to post some information regarding you know, questions that I might ask you during the course of the lesson. All right, guys, uh, let's rock and roll. First one, mate in one. I'm gonna try to get through the mate in ones uh, a little bit faster today. I mean, I want us to do it. I think it's always good practice for you guys. Uh, you need to be sharp when it comes to your checkmates, but I want us to be able to spend a little bit of additional time um, with our treading carefully and our stalemate conversations. Mate in one, why to play, let's rock and roll. So guys, get involved. If you think you've got it, type it in. Rico starts off strong. Lovely stuff, young man. Um, Yes, he's been doing incredibly well over the past few lessons. The young man is, is, is getting sharp these days. Rook H7. That's a nice, easy mate. Probably not the most difficult one you guys have ever solved, um, but useful nevertheless. King can't take the rook. Why? Well, the knight is defending. I think that's probably the most important thing. I've mentioned this before. Whenever I'm looking into checkmates, you generally want the two pieces to coordinate, to work together. That's normally a very important concept when it comes to mating the king. But I would even say it's more important just to make sure that you're never going to lose that piece. I mean, like if I'm thinking of moving rook here, you're like, well, it cuts off some squares. But the great problem is that the king is just going to eat the rook. And then suddenly you just lost the rook for nothing. And that's, that's a huge issue. So whether it's checkmating or just, you know, let's say middle game opening, anything like that, you want to make sure that... They're not just going to take your piece for free. You know, at any stage, losing even a free pawn just for no reason is, is not good. I mean, obviously, it's not the end of the world. It's just one free pawn, but it's the idea that's bad. We don't really want to give up any of our pieces um, freely. All right, let's move. Why to play, main one. <clears throat> So guys, as usual, when you're looking for the mate, um, look, how can I attack this king? And how can I prevent him from escaping? Because this is the only available square that the black king has. The knight is covering these two squares. So the only available um, squares that black king would have is e8 and f7. So you're like, okay, I see what you're saying. I need to bring another piece in. So hopefully cover these two squares and then that should seal the deal. Let's see who's got the goods.
Where can we make this king? I know you should be looking, probably already looking at this knight. You're like, mm, I know it's with him. I'm just not sure if I go to c7 or should I go to d6? Tricky, 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 because it's both check. And you're like, okay, well, I'm just not sure because it's check, but I also need to cover this square. So mm, it's a tricky one. It is a little bit tricky. Knight e7. Knight e7, knight e7, knight c7. Okay. So interesting one and probably a little bit, um, I'd say a little bit advanced for today's conversation. But any case, just a fun fact. When both knights or both rooks, it only occurs with knights and rooks, can move to the same square, you have to say which knight. So in this case, if you just said knight c7, for instance, both knights could go to c7. So we don't really know which one. I know that you meant this one, just because that's the one that makes sense. So in this case, you'd have to say knight b, because the knight's on the b file. Or alternatively, knight e, because the knight would be on the e file. So then you would be, it would just depend. If you moved this knight, then it would be knight e, as you can see on the lead chess. Knight E to C7, or the alt alternative Knight B to C7. Guys, unfortunately, neither of those moves are the correct one. We said we needed to bring in an additional piece. That's this guy. We needed to cover the F7 square, and the only way we're going to do that is by going Knight D6. The Knight on D6 covers E8 and covers the F7 square at the same time. So that was pretty much the only way to deliver a mate in one. Pretty strange. Uh, under normal circumstances, you can't generally um, checkmate an opposition king with just a king and two knights. Um, but here we have an exception. As we have so many times on the chessboard, there's a rule and then there's the exception to the rule. And uh, this is one of those very many exceptions that we do encounter on the chessboard. White to play, main one. Let's rock and roll. So look at all possible checks. I like to look at all possible checks and all possible takes in every chess position that I analyze. It doesn't matter if it's, like I said, opening, middle game, end game. I'm always like, mm, what can I take? What can they take of mine? Where are the checks? What do I need to be aware of? In this one, your life's made a little bit easy because you actually can't move this knight. There's some checks with the knight, but it looks like the knight's pinned. Let's make this one red, because the rook is putting pressure on this king. The knight cannot just move. If he it, Attempting to move the knight, if I do it on the machine, it won't let me see that. It's an illegal move, you know, and that's often we make illegal moves on the chessboard. Um, but it's very important that you point out to your opponent. You're like, hey, you know, unfortunately, you can't, you can't make that move. That is an illegal move. It's a move we're not allowed to make. Knight BC7, all right. That's from the last one in Rookie 5. Thank you, Rico. Good participation. Very nice. And he is right. The Rook gets involved. I think there was two big checks that you guys needed to look at with the Rook. Is That's Rook E5 and Rook G4. Now, G4, already you can tell that there's going to be some problems. Because you're like... If I move the rook down, then who's going to be covering these squares? Suddenly, the rook isn't going to be on the fifth rank anymore. And he's not going to be covering the squares on the fifth rank, obviously. So then it looks like you can move up. You can't move to the squares. The knight, even though he's pinned, he's still covering that square. So he can't move, but he can still be of use. And here he, he is of use in this position. He defends the rook on e5, which makes it impossible for the black king to take that rook. So that's all good. Um, and then there's no available squares. The rook's got the e file. He can't go to f4 because the knight covers that square. And these squares are all taken. Sorry, Mr. King. That is a mate. Well done, well done. All right, guys, last main one for the day. Let's rock and roll. Why to play mate in one? So these positions are always interesting. I mean, uh, you can probably take any approach that you'd like to check mate black here. I'm personally a big fan of the ladder method. I know a lot of you guys are as well. Um, it makes life easy. So, I mean, obviously the ladder method would be a slow process here. You'd probably check mate them in like, I don't know, seven or eight moves. If you just did a simple ladder, um, 
but okay, it's always nice to keep the brain sharp and be on the alert and try and take opportunities that present themselves on the board. Why to play main one? How can we attack this king and cover this e4 square at the same time? Guys, one of the hints I'm going to give you is the rooks need to stay where they are. You don't want to move the rooks because suddenly it's the same story as the previous example. If you move the rook off the fifth rank, he's not covering the fifth rank. If you move the rook off the third, suddenly he's no longer covering all the squares necessary on the third. So there's another sneaky sneaky that's hidden in here. <clears throat> F3. Woof. When you're good, you're good. That's what they say. All right. So F3. Uh, opens up the diagonal of the bishop, hitting the king. So that's a check. Very, very nice. Uh, king's under attack. So the next thing is then just to investigate, have we covered the e4 square? Well, absolutely we have. The f3 pawn does the job. And like we said, the rooks, the rooks cover all of these squares. So we're pretty good here. Um, there's some overlapping fire from the two rooks, it seems. But we're not too bothered about that. As long as the squares are covered, it doesn't have to be covered twice or three times. It's really not important. Um, he's in check. He cannot escape the check. He has been checkmated. Nicely done. All right, good stuff. Let's move. All right, so we're on to our trading carefully. Uh, sort of our main subject matter for, for today. And that's today we're talking all about stalemate. So... Like we said, stalemate is it's a position where the king cannot move and there is no check. Very much the same as checkmate. We'll get into that in a moment's time. So let's say white plays queen f6, which is a move that I could easily see myself playing. I think a lot of good chess players, it would be like an automatic move. You know, you're like, well, there's a free pawn here. And I'm getting my queen closer to the opposition king. Probably going to deliver a mate here sometime in the near future. It's all good. And it would be all good if uh, Black had some move of some kind. Like if there was a pawn here and he could just make a move. He could just push the pawn or push the pawn. Do something, actually. Then I'd just deliver a mate and we'd all be very happy. But what's clear is that the king can't move. And as it's the only piece that Black has, that's an issue. Because suddenly there are no available moves that black can play, which is the definition of stalemate. So now the king has been stalemated. What happens when it's stalemate? Well, it's a draw. It's not something new. It's not something that we uh, haven't ever discussed. It's just something that we haven't discussed um, lately. So, of course, now this game results in a draw. And uh, the person playing black is very, very happy. It's, a, it's almost like a victory to them because they were just about to lose. And then the person playing white is obviously um, almost, you know, gutted as you were just about to win the game. And now, you know, now it's a draw. So, guys, what I think the easiest solution to avoid stalemate is to always ensure that your opponent's king has one square. That's probably the first thing. And then you probably don't have to worry so much about that if they have another piece on the board, whether it's a pawn or a piece or something of, of any kind of piece for that matter, because then that piece can make a move. And if they can make a move of any kind, it's not stalemate. So remember, stalemate doesn't just mean that the king can't move. It's that there are no moves in total. There are no moves on the whole board. There's no possible move that can be made. So you could move something like queen here, for instance, which pretty much does the job. It's an L shape, which is good stuff. Cuts off the king, which is good stuff. You're threatening a maiden one, which is, again, good. Um, if they push the pawn, of course, you just deliver the mate. We're all very happy about that. They could run, and then you'll just follow them, I guess. Again, threatening mate. King runs, takes. And probably just a nice, easy little mate. Again, it doesn't have to be immediate. You could move the king. He's trapped. And then there's a couple mate and ones. You can mate here. You can mate here. You've got these squares as well. Um, any of these moves result in mate. So you see just a little bit of a dodge. It's kind of like there was a trap there. A bit of a landmine that we dodged in this queen takes f6. 
So there was a stalemate. We avoided the stalemate and we successfully converted the game into a victory. Let's move. Okay, this one should be on the black side. Okay, very important guys. Remember, especially I find when I look at these things online um, and sort of on the 2D board, um, on the computer, let's just say. Um, and then sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You're like, who's going which way? You know, you're not always sure. So look at the seven and the eight, look at the one and the two, and just try and make sure you understand who's, who's on which side. So the white pawns all start at this side and the black pawns all start at this side. So we're playing black here and we're moving up the board just the same as they would be moving down the board. So the point here is that black wants to promote. And for me, I would probably promote, you know, you're just like, hey, I can promote. Of course I want to promote. That's how you win nine out of 10 in games. You know, you, you get yourself into the end game and then the, the objective is just to promote those pawns as quickly as possible because who doesn't want a queen? A queen's going to win me the game, plain and simple. Yes, please. Um, so, but there's a huge problem. Promoting is a mistake. Well, at least promoting into a queen is a mistake. We almost always promote to a queen. Why, you ask? Well... Again, we have a stalemate position. So sometimes these can sneak up almost like in a, um, what's this, unsuspecting, very unsuspecting way. You're like, what I just promoted, how's that stalemate? It just almost feels like you got unlucky there. Like they just, uh, they set you up almost um, in this sort of situation. So if you promote it, like I said, you get a queen, it's already stalemate, and then you're like, oh no. You know, you were, again, you had the king and queen. You would have used the L-shaped method. You've learned your methods. You know what you're doing. You would have checkmated them, no problem. Now you've stalemated them, and it's, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. So let's go back and see how do we avoid this problem. Again, it's just about dodging uh, the trap or not falling for a trick. You know, it's basically that. So we just kind of need to waste the move. There is a trick here where you can actually promote to a rook because the rook doesn't cover this h3 square. So again, these squares are all covered, but I just need you to move to one square and then I can mate you here in the corner. Um, all right, but uh, we'll actually look at a different option here. I can just give your king some space. So I move my king to secure the promotion square. That way I know I'm promoting, it's all good. And um, I've given uh, the white king some space now. He can actually move. I mean, no danger of stalemating him. Whew. You know, I've dodged that bullet. Very happy about that. And now I can just promote. Again, he's got lots of squares. Just make sure that the king has got a space to move. And it's all good. He goes here. I get the L shape. I know it's a kind of a backwards L. But an L shape is an L shape. Remember, I can turn the L uh, upside down, around, however I want. It's, it's still an L shape. And then I think you guys will remember from previous discussions using the L shape method with the king and queen just to um, to trap and then to checkmate the opposition king. If there's any uncertainty in your mind, you're like, uh, I'm not so sure about that one. It's been a while. Um, go ahead and just return and have a look at one of those videos. I think there might actually be more than one video where we discuss some king and queen checkmates. So just go and have a good look at that again. Just refresh the memory, no harm in that. Uh, we all need to do that from time to time. All right, let's move on. A little bit of a sneaky sneaky. All right, so this one, um, more or less, this king is, um, He's trapped. He's in big trouble. This is a king and a rook, which is a little bit more complicated than me, than we are used to dealing with. So I'm going to help you guys through this one. Uh, what you need is you need the king to move into opposition. And opposition is the two kings facing each other. So you basically need it to be black's move, which is kind of easy, actually. If, you, if you're ever in that situation, you're like, I just need it to be his move now. Or, or her move, because you're like, mm, I just need them to move. Now. As soon as they move, I'm going to get them with my trick. Then you need to do what's called a waiting move. 
But what the waiting moves job is, is just to kind of wait. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of, you're just waiting. You're just saying, all right, it's cool. I'm going to let them move. Once they've made their move, I'm going to pounce. I've got my plan. I just need them to move. So we're just going to make a nice, easy waiting move here. Okay. So just for the record, the king does move. If he moves back into the opposition, I can deliver a mate straight away. Okay. This is how you check mate with the king and a rook, by the way. You force the opposition king into opposition and then you check them on the back rank. Again, it has to be on one of the edges of the board uh, because that's where the king has the least uh, available squares to run to. Okay, fine. So this guy knows what he's doing. He's not going to go here. He's going to run. And then just like what we usually do once we've trapped them, we just follow. Okay, we just get a one step closer with the king. Now the black king has no choice but to go here. And we just deliver the mate. Very, very nice. So, I mean, it's easy if you know what you're doing. Um, but it also can be a little bit tricky if, if you don't. This is cool. This is a nice little, um, let's call it stepping stone to check mating uh, with the king and a rook. Just shows you what you need to be on the lookout for. Uh, and there is some potential of a stalemate in this, as always, when the king gets to the corner. I've seen quite a few positions where people play moves like rook here, where they just blockade the king. Again, this is the definition of stalemate. We, um, you've got no moves. This king can't move anywhere. But most importantly, he's not in check. If I added a queen here and it was check, it would be check, and the king wouldn't be able to escape the check. It would be checkmate. But because there's no check, it's not checkmate. Okay. And just the same, if there is a check, then it can't be stalemate. Okay. So if there's a check, can't be stalemate. And if there's no check, it can't be checkmate. Let's move. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. So I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, I'm just going to eat this bishop. Woohoo! Free bish. And uh, then I'm going to checkmate them next move. It's all good. But again, I just want to bring up that stalemate, the warning bells. When there's just the king left, you're like, ooh, I've got to be careful. I've got to be careful because if I take this, stalemate. Again, He's got no available squares to move to. He's stuck. And he gets a draw for this. It's like, ooh, no, 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 no. We can't have that. Definitely don't want that. So knowing that, of course, we're not going to go queen takes bishop. We're going to try and find an alternative move that uh, will work better. I'm going to go king here. I'll just go king takes bishop, actually. That if I go king takes bishop, then the king has still got these squares. You'll actually have this square as well once the king has taken the bishop too. So that's fine. I think now, I don't know if they're going to continue. If they move the king, either one of these squares. Then I'm going to take the bishop with check. Again, it's check. So it cannot be stalemate. Maybe it's checkmate, but it's not. And then I just deliver, excuse me, that was a bit skew. Um, I just deliver the queen to g2 and a little checkmate to the opposition king. So here, uh, let's just fix that. So let's put that over there. Just queen g2 and that'll be a nice little mate there. Nice and easy actually. A little bit tricky. Got to keep your eye. And then the one I actually wanted to show you guys, if this bishop chooses to move, he's like, okay, no, he didn't fall for my trap. But then now I've got the king in a nice square, which helps. Again, the two pieces are working together on this square. So I can play queen here because the king defends the queen. It's all good. Okay, he can't take my queen, which is, which is a major plus. King here is forced. I know you guys can see it. Yes, you're correct. There's some checkmates over here on g2 and h2. And uh, well, choose one choose one you could actually take the bishop because then you open up this square but you can see we're in kind of an l-shaped situation with the opposition king so this king can't move um, it's not stalemate 
Why? Because this bishop can still move. So this is a good example to illustrate that just because the king can't move doesn't mean it's stalemate. Look, you can still move the bishop. A sneaky move might be something like this. He gives us a check and he's like, come on, take my bishop. And if you do, it's stalemate, which means a draw. But you're like, no, I don't want your bishop. You just keep that bishop there. And then next move, black will just deliver. You can put the bishop here. You're like, no, 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 I don't want that bishop. And you just checkmate him nice and easy on the edge two square. All right, so I hope these examples is helping you guys to understand that stalemate is a danger and it's something that you guys need to be aware of. And obviously we need to do our best to avoid it. Yes, you're going to stalemate somebody at some stage, unfortunately, you know, we've all done it. And uh, the, the mission, the objective is to try and not do it ever again. Okay. But like I said, it'll probably have to, it'll probably happen at some stage, but if we're careful and we're on the lookout, we can try to do it as little as possible. Last one for the day. All right, common position. I believe we've done an exercise or two on this before. This is um, end game position where you promote the pawns. You've got two pass pawns. You're on a roll. You're about to promote. You're about to win. You're feeling good. Okay, you let your guard down a little bit. You're like, yeah, I'm going to move king here. And then I'm going to push the pawn. And then I'm going to win. Nice. And then you suddenly get that feeling in your stomach. You're like, what, what have I done? Uh, where can this king move? He can't, he can't. He, you're like, no, no, he can't move anywhere. All the squares have been taken and we've stalemated the opponent. So very important to see which available squares the king has and make sure you leave them one square, just one. They don't need more than one, it's cool. Okay, you can have this one. So we'll go king here rather, which allows the king to, it allows him a little bit of air so he can escape, which allows us to enter and secure and control this B8 square. So after king takes, we can simply promote. And here we have it. L shape already, they did it for us. We're gonna just follow this king. Never L shape in the corner. Ding, ding, ding. Alarm bell goes off. We're like, okay, cool. I won't, uh, won't do that. Let me bring in the support. Let me do it nice and slow. The king is just but bringing the king in. And the final blow is delivered. It's check. He cannot escape the check. He has been checkmated. Okay, so guys, again, when the king is on his own, make sure that there's at least one square for him, okay? And just be on the lookout for stalemate because a lot of the time you've worked hard to get yourselves into these winning positions and you're on the verge of victory and we can throw it away so easily uh, with this stalemate. So very important to ensure that we've mastered this and that we don't stalemate our opponents um, going forward. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys uh, have been practicing your chess. Uh, let's keep up the good work. And let's keep up the good practice. Look after yourselves. And until next time, goodbye.